sorry, Eagle. Thank you for letting me know. I saw your stuff. Eventually. <laughs> and that's cut out now. I don't want to go back again. <laughs> Anyways, you guys are uh, in Dollar Entity. Uh, Gang Grand Main has pulled you, uh, turned you around, uh, and he is uh, looking at you and says, uh, "Before you go, there's one last task to give you. Uh, as you both know, you both carry the the sword and the mace." I would like you to deliver those to the uh, the primary temple, the Cathedral of Light, here in New Lordran. It can be very easy to find. All you have to do is follow the light. And he points up above uh, to the sky above, and uh, you can see easily he's pointing to the center uh, the center column of light in the city. Um, deliver it there to the priest, the priest and priestesses, and. Uh, And then you can uh, at least have a break. Uh, I have secured some lodging uh, for us before we left, but I went ahead and secured plenty for my guards. And since they won't be needing them, you guys can stay uh, where I've arranged. Uh, and then he looks over at you, Oriana. I think you'll like it. Uh, you'll find it in the Moonlit Park. Uh, it's called the Moon uh, the Moonlit Inn. And, uh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> There's a lot more to it, but yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, you guys should at least enjoy your stay there. Um, don't worry about money or anything. Uh, I've already taken care of it. Anyways, with that I will let you depart. Uh, uh, when you say don't worry about money or anything, you've already taken care of it. Does that mean just for the inn where we're sleeping? Or does that mean, like, I could go to a shop and be like, I want all your potions and you're taking care of it. I just need clarification before I buy all the potions in a shop. I have taken care of your room and board, and that is all I can do. Okay. Let's if see, you go to a shop, to clarify. if you go to a shop, it's all on you. And, Audric, one other thing. Don't worry about the Astraea. I have plans for her. We'll put her back in, we'll put her back into service and hopefully, hopefully soon I'll be able to find somebody to uh, guide her to where she needs to go, to whatever task they have. Hopefully that task might be locating the ship's former captain and finding out what happened. I am hoping that will be the case. Well, we shall deliver these to the temple and then meet up with you later. Alright. I will meet you as soon as I can and uh, just, again, take time to rest. This is a, uh, this is a city for that. Eagle, by the way, uh, they've landed at New Lordaeron. They're being given a mission to go to the center of the city for... Uh, uh, to deliver the Ashbringer and the mace that they found on the Astera. <laughs> you didn't miss much, Eagle. We just landed, <laughs> literally. Um, as both of you two look out uh, upon the, uh, the docks area and the shipping area, uh, you can see that there are merchants on the... Uh, and just all over the place. Uh, some are uh, in stores. They actually have buildings and the signs are open. And they have got the doors open and the windows up. Uh, shouting and crying out, trying to get customers to come in. But there's also people who are uh, at stalls and stands. And they're uh, trying to uh, garner as much attention as they can to try to get people to, uh, uh, to come and shop. And then there's uh, several priests and priestesses walking across. Uh, several mages as well. Uh, you also notice a large cat with midnight fur walking through the streets. Audrey, look, it's a cat! I'm gonna go pet it. I go pet it. Interesting. Okay. Right, just quick note. I'm guessing Audrey has the cool weapons, right? Uh... If you gave them to, uh, to I totally Gen, gave it to him. To Gen, he's handed them back to you. 
to let you both Me? carry them. Yes. Okay, before I you. pet the cat, whatever weapon I'm holding, I give to Ajik and then I go pet the cat. Okay, give me an hey. animal handling check. But these weapons are made of metal. I can't hold these. <laughs> you can be the bag man for a second. <laughs> we're not. We're out of earshot of Gen, right? We like left. We're in the street now. Yes, he's gone okay. back. Uh, he seems to have gone about uh, some business, uh, walked past you guys and such. Okay. Okay, I just, I'll say to Oriana, like, next time we talk to the king, don't ask him if he's going to pay for you to buy an entire potion shop full of potions. <laughs> it was just He's the example. king. That was a terrible example. <laughs> Let's have a more modest sure example that, well, next time. Well, I didn't, I didn't, I felt like, I didn't want to accidentally do it and then say, by the way, it's on the king's tab. Like, that seems like that would have been worse. Yeah, that would have been worse, but I don't see why you thought that was covered. He said everything's taken care of. Don't worry about money. What does that mean? Now I know what that means. <laughs> now I know what you think that means. I mean, if someone told me that money was taken care of, I yes. I would assume, but it was not. so. I I clarified. I honestly don't really understand why you thought why you're upset about this. I think I may, I corrected a terrible mistake that might have happened. I feel like that's what just happened. Okay, sure. Also, this cat is really pretty, and I rolled a five. Five total. Okay. <clears throat> uh, as you go to, uh, you say the cat is really pretty. You go to uh, to pet it. He turns around and you see his fangs large for you like six inch fangs stick out and he snarls oh are you a druid I'm sorry I know that's offensive I I you just your fear is very pretty I <laughs> just I want to touch it have a good day I'm going to make you go to the cathedral <laughs> 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 and I ignore the and I ignore the cat and continue towards the light. Okay. Uh, as you guys carry the weapons uh, uh, through the town, uh, you notice uh, every now and then a paladin will start walking beside you. Whether or not you're displaying the weapons out or you've got them in your bag, paladins seem to be gathering around you. They're Roger. both silver hand, white with gray, uh, with uh, silver trim, uh, uh, with silver trim on their capes and their tabards, and they're escorting you and seem to be following you. Uh, there are also uh, people with uh, blue and white trim, uh, argent dawn colors, and then there are also a few others who are white with red trim. Audric, did the king say something about? The weird paladins acting like cultists crawling around us and escorting us when announced. That ever, did that come up at some point? No, but they're probably attracted by the weapons. But don't worry, they're paladins. Do you mean like, do you mean like it's calls to them? I don't want to sort this talking to them. That seems uncomfortable. <laughs> they're paladins of the light. I don't think anything bad is going to happen. Okay, it's on your head then. We're just traveling in a large pack. Of yeah. people we don't know. It started I out. With... I thought I thought wolves were very intimately, like close. This seems weird. It started off with five, and now you're up to like nine as you're going through what appears to be a uh, centralized location, uh, where um, there's a lot more housing here, a lot more dwarven architecture and such. Uh, you. As you continue on through the city, the paladins seem to vary in height uh, and race. Uh, some are human, some are uh, high elves, some are dwarves. Uh, there's a couple gnomes every now and then, not much, like one or two. Uh, and as you guys pass by, uh, or go through this district, uh, you pass by an inn, the last drop. And that is where you, Ketesh, see a group of paladins escorting... 
a pair of individuals with a couple of weapons uh, that are uh, radiating a energy that you know very familiar that you're very familiar with Uh, the energy it radiates uh, is one of the light and is paladin weapons and usually when people do something like this and go towards the center of the city with a weapon in their hands like that it you kind of know that they're uh, bringing the weapons of the dead so to say it's part of the customs that you've studied about and know about for at least for humans <coughs> oh we don't know about these customs because we're just like wow this is weird yep <laughs> you guys uh well it's oriana, so mysterious you, guys oriana you actually would uh, i probably would that's true yes you would know of these uh of these customs and Kissing Kyrath had to leave momentarily. Because, <laughs> for those who don't know, I don't not play with my Discord uh, chat up, so or at least with uh, when I'm GMing, so I have no clue what any messages say. Okay. Yeah, he'll be there right are, back. There are there are secret messages. <laughs> secret secret messages. All the secrets. It's all the secrets. Oh yeah, all the secrets. Anyways, uh, Ketesh, you see this entire troop. Uh, from what you can tell, uh, the time you've been uh, here in the city, you don't see any paladin over there that you might recognize. But you do see them being escorted, and uh, I'm going to give you another 20 seconds before they pass by. Yeah, he's going to follow them, but he's not going to like be super close. Yes, okay. he's, he's, he's jumping in. I okay. rolled a, I rolled a check, and um, yeah, he's he's going, he's going, he's okay. following. Okay. Uh, then in that case, as you guys walk towards uh, the center of the city, and Kyrath is not going to hear this, which is terrible because. <laughs> Andrek is paying attention to like holding on to the weapons and being like you know stoic. Right now, like, whoa! What is what is all the things? What is all the things? She's yep. not. Paying attention to the march. Yep. Uh, as you guys continue on through this, uh, uh, more of a uh, dwarven area and more of a living area, pretty much, uh, of the city, more of a residential area, you come into a lot more of a temples and more marbled buildings, and then you come to a a space where there is nothing in this courtyard. But a small building in the far or in the center of it, and what looks to be like pews lining uh, the entire courtyard. So as you're stepping in, there's this massive, almost, uh, and the word just went out out my head. Uh, amphitheater style, uh, air amphitheater style uh, seating, and it is. It, it looks to be. Like uh, one of the places that, uh, say, maybe a, a high priest of the light would come and deliver a message, and you walk down into the uh, into the light area that's shining. Uh, also, as you walk, you notice three uh, in a triangle pattern around the center area, the in the cathedral area, uh, three crystalline beings. Uh, Oriana, you might know what these are. Uh, you know that these are Naru. That was going to be my guess. Yeah. Uh, Audric, you don't know what they are because you've not quite traveled to see them yet. Uh, Kitesh, you, however, know what they are. You've, uh, you've been in the city long enough to know that they just float around there and are like beings of the light. Uh, you've seen several Drenai as well in the city, so you're fine. Uh, and as you go towards the center, do you go into the chapel? I mean, so I'm probably carrying the maze. What are those? They're called the, Na they're called the Nauru. They are basically beings of the light. They're 
kind of important. Um, also, like, um, you know how you were okay. Let me put it to you this way. You know how you were complaining about the way I spoke to the king. It'd mm -hmm. be way worse if you were rude to these people. Like, 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 totally worlds above rude. Worse. So, no animal behavior. And then I put my chin up, and I straighten up, and I take the mace, and I go towards the Daru. Just follow my lead! Okay. Where to put it. I just follow Oriana. There you go, Kitesh. Yeah, he's not. He's not going. He's not. He's. 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 <laughs> kind of, he's he. He is. He is smart enough to realize that. Um, that uh, some. He's not gonna be able to figure out like get the weapons and such, and so he just wants to know who these people are. So he's just gonna wait and follow them after they do whatever they're doing inside the chapel. <laughs> okay. But, uh, like, if other people, like, if a bunch of other paladins and stuff, like, kind of file in, he might, like, sneak in and, like, just kind of sit in the back area. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, what you've noticed is that uh, most of the paladins have stopped and have surrounded the little chapel. Uh, and as you're out there, Ketesh, you notice they wait for a few minutes uh, after Oriana and Audric go inside after this night elf and human carrying these weapons go into the chapel uh, they give a few minutes and then they all disperse uh, also just a second or two after they went in uh, Audric and Oriana you two see uh, a very tall uh, high elf golden hair come walking by you guys if you wish to know who he is you may have to roll Roll what? Uh, you would have to roll history. History. Oh, I got this. You got this? Are you trained in history? The I high intellect score? In I got a seven. I got... Ooh, not bad, actually. I got a twelve. Not too bad. Um... If anything, you note that his colors are... Uh, oh, man, I forgot about Kyra. Uh, your table, anyways. Uh, you notice his colors are... Uh, the colors of his uniform, you notice those really well. Uh, they're the colors of uh, Silvermoon. I, 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 rolled, I rolled a 21. You rolled a 21? You know this is Lorthamar. Lorthamar... I forgot his last name. Uh, yeah, he um... is one of the high generals... Of uh, Silver Moon. Lorthamar Theron, if I remember okay. right. Lorthamar Theron, you have it. Yep. Nice too. He's, so he's a Blood Elf? High, High elf. elf member. There are no Blood Elves. Oh, he right. looks like a Blood Elf. He has a green eye. No, there are no yep. Blood Elves. Oh. There, no, you're hallucinating green eyes. <laughs> <laughs> They're blue eyes. Deal with it. Technically, they would be blue eyes at this point. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, yes. Uh, in this world, uh, he is only the general. He's not the leader, the faction leader of the High Elves, or Blood Elves. Because the Blood Elves have or don't exist yet. They don't exist. Or ever. Yet? What do you mean, yet? <laughs> it depends entirely on what happens on you guys now. I have world-changing uh, scales so. on, play, on the line here, so... Uh, Yes. But anyways, you guys see uh, him leaving uh, Ketesh. You know exactly who this is. Uh, Oriana, not so much. You know the colors are definitely high up there, but don't know who he is. Uh, Ketesh, you know he. this is Lorthamar. You know he's high up there. He's actually a paladin as well. Uh, but he is a paladin of Silver Moon. Not of any other place. He is a... Uh, like second or third in line to the throne of Silvermoon. 
and you have an mm -hmm. idea as to why he's here, he's probably here because of a couple of things that you know about. Particularly at the meeting that's coming up in a week. Uh. Noted. Yep. So I'm just gonna. So since the paladins aren't going in, I'm I'm just gonna chill, kind of outside-ish, and not look conspicuous like. Okay. So, so Oriana, as she approaches the Naru, she holds the weapon out almost ceremoniously, and straightens up, and Audric, I try. You you see cues from Oriana like. Most of the goofiness that she usually keeps on is like go is mostly gone, and she's gone full professional priest priestly. And she, as I I walk up Naru, I keep my eyes uh, on them and pay attention to them as I walk. As you guys walk up towards the chapel, uh, they which are floating several hundred feet above the chapel all turn to you and watch you as you. Uh, Enter the chapel. <laughs> and inside the chapel it is a uh, kind of a large layout here. Um, a bunch of pews, uh, some of which look like they have been added recently. Like they've got a really good speaker, then just started adding more in. And um, you hear from the corner, ah, oh, good day to you. Not necessarily the corner, but the far end of the corners, over near some of the uh, tables and such. I look over to where the the voices. Okay, you see uh, very rich robes of uh, white and red, in particular, uh, some blues and such, and you see a very tall, with a white beard, Drenai. Do I know who that is? Um... Okay. I know what the Naru is. Do I know who he is? Yeah, actually you both would since he's making waves. Uh, Ooh, I know who he is. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Audric knows the thing. <laughs> More like yeah, he's my favorite remembers character. a little bit. <laughs> well, I know who Prophet Velen is. He's cool. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know if Audric knows who that is. Uh, Audric has heard of him. Uh, he's heard of a uh, charismatic speaker among the Draenei, which are a new race to the Alliance right now. And you know they're being led by somebody who is uh, who's uh, reputed to be wise and uh, very old and ancient, but is still very powerful in the light. Okay, so recognizing him, I turn to him and I say, "Are you who we? Are you who we are to give these weapons to?" You have weapons of fallen heroes. Curious. Me too. I'm sad to see that they have fallen, but yes, I am the one you present them to. I give him a respectful bow and I hand him the weapon. Uh, which one do you hand him? I have the mace. Audrey has the sword. Okay. So you hand him the mace, the Path of Radiance, and he uh, looks over it and almost like he's remembering something and he's like, I know this paladin. And he lays it down on a uh, on a uh, on a table that's got a Draenei a kind of a, a Draenei futuristic uh gizmo basically and as you lay it down or as he lays it down uh, you see a picture come up and a profile of all the all of his all of his accomplishments that's fancy yes I would also like you to notice you know exactly here you've seen this picture before as you look at him he's got brown hair pulled back into a ponytail uh, a goatee that is nicely trimmed. And he's got shining blue eyes for some reason. Kyra, consult your notes. <laughs> I don't remember. Instead of typing new notes, consult the I don't old notes. about thinking about this. No, but a, we a human. We said we with, recognize the picture. Yep, 
a human. You said we? I thought you said Oriana. Both of you do. Oh, both of us do. Mm -hmm. uh, the facial features, you can recall them and see them actually kind of quite clearly. No roll needed for this because you dealt with him about three weeks ago. Oh, a person with a trimmed goatee whose eyes are glowing ice blue. Wait, no. Wait, the person who's the Death Knight? Yeah, your sister's a death knight, so sorry. What? No! <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but like I said, there's also a full profile dossier of him if you would, if you want to read it over uh, as the prophet villain name? looks at it. Uh, you look at his name, and it says Paladin Baranath Stormwind. Or Stormward, sorry. Stormward. Yeah. Can someone refresh my memory on what exactly we know about him? We don't know the term Death Knight, right? Not what the term Death Knight is. He's an undead soldier. Knight. Yes. A zombie knight. A zombie uh, knight. knight. Very powerful. I don't remember what we coined, what the term was. I think we just called him Zombie Knight Dude. <laughs> Stone, what was the last name? Stonewall? Stone. Storm Ward. Storm. Okay. Alright, and as he uh, takes the mace off the uh, the stand, uh, the, doc uh, the uh, dossier stays up there for just a little bit longer, and then it shimmers away as he goes and places it over on a purification table, where it is going to be purified, and as he's doing that, he... Uh, explains a little bit and says this will purify the weapon of uh, the loss of life and will make it new, uh, reusable for other paladins of the Silver Hand. And as he places it on this table uh, there's a shutter as a device underneath it comes to life and starts scanning the weapon or it looks like it's scanning the weapon and about halfway through, the weapon starts vibrating violently and gets shot and rockets off the table. I need you both to make a dexterity saving throw. What the heck? These devices are faulty. Should have gotten gnome tech. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I got 19. Not too bad. Oh! Is it dexterity saving throw? Is that what it was? Yes. I think that's a 15. I got that 15. 15. Okay, yeah, that'll that'll be enough. Uh, as uh, all three of you, the Prophet Velen, uh, you, Oriana, Audric, you both see this mace erupt off of this, and it embeds itself in one of the walls. You, all three of you, barely, uh, barely miss got getting hit. Oriana raises a hand. That was not supposed to happen. Oh. <laughs> Usually, the weapon is purified and is allowed to be imprinted and attuned on to another person. Maybe it got defected or defective during the combat. No, that means the person who actually owns this hammer is still alive. Some way. You know, actually, well, that kind if of makes sense. He's, yeah. Do zombies count as being alive? It's like 50 50, I think. That is a curious answer. I 
do not know if they do or not. I have not it's had this that happen. We, we've seen him before. He tried to kill us, but he had like pale skin and dark armor, and we were pretty certain he was undead, so that might be why this is a little broken. Mm. Curious. Anyway, we also brought the Ashbringer. Do you what? <laughs> I'll it take is... that. I'm assuming it's like wrapped up, right? So I'll just hand it to him. You guys never said you wrapped it back up, so the blade oh. is still shining. <laughs> okay. Probably also probably one of the why reasons. I'm... Yeah. Probably also one of the reasons why everybody escorted you. Here. I imagine. So. Okay. It has been a while since I saw this blade. It went missing about a year back when we discovered Alexandros was no longer alive. It was a sad day for the light that day. And he'll take the blade gen uh, gently, gingerly, and will um, again go through the whole ritual, laying it on the identification uh, stone. And then you see a picture of Mograine, uh, Alexandrus Mograine, uh, shoulder length hair, uh, mustache, uh, almost a full beard, uh, all white. But in his eyes were a strength of life uh, about him that didn't look like he would ever die. And it lists all of his accomplishments, which, if you go up and look at it, it scrolls down and scrolls down and scrolls down. And scrolls down and continues on for several pages. Uh, lots of engagements with the undead uh, all over the place in eastern plague lands, western plague lands, uh, in Gilneas, in Hillsbrad, all over the place. Uh, and it goes on for several years, uh, back decades even. And then he'll take the blade and go over to the purification table and lay it there. Hey, step behind something. <laughs> <laughs> or around the corner. I, I just duck around the corner. I step behind Audric. Okay. Uh, as you guys do that. And I, and I, and I get down, because I'm taller than Audric, I get down lower so that I'm directly <laughs> behind him. All right. As you cower behind Audric, uh, the scanning process starts up, the purification process starts up, and it goes through the entire blade all the way to the end, cl uh, cleansing and clarifying, or uh, cleansing and purifying the blade for attunement to another paladin to use as they see fit. And he's, I get up. Get him out of, out of cover and straighten up. Like, Audric, what? I don't even know what you were worried about. <laughs> <laughs> that is very curious. I was not expecting that with a Paladin Stormwind, uh, Stormwood's uh, hammer, but this, the Lightbringer, or the uh, Ashbringer, we will keep this safe. Make sure somebody, uh, somebody who is worthy of its title can wield it. Yeah, I think there's some very foul evil running amok in the world that led to the death of these paladins. And my sister may be involved somehow. So, if you know anybody who knows anything, we need to do something about this before the entire planet is destroyed. That's, that's, a, that's a good point, Audric. That's, that would be the exact right time to do something. About this. Very well then. Um, in that case, and he'll put the uh, the sword uh, on another table just to let it sit and just be alone. And he'll take the mace, the hammer, out of the uh, the wall, and will hand you guys the hammer, and the war hammer, and say, "Until you find the owner of this one, I'm not. I'm sure that." You are destined to take care of this. The light has chosen you to bear this weapon. <laughs> As you guys stare at this metalwork hammer, it's like, 
Um, I need you to die. Uh -huh. I just looked up at your face and you had the same face as me. Anyways, as to your question, um, I suspect you will wish uh, you will want to speak with uh, Arthas Menethil uh, about all of this. Um, I take the mace. I look at Audrey. Like, do you know how to use this? Because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Ktesh, you did hear a uh, large crashing sound. Uh, the breaking of stone happened just. Uh, it, just a few seconds ago. <laughs> so, so how big is this weapon? Uh, it's considered a war hammer. So a two-handed, like it's smashy. It's a two-handed smashy mace. I uh, guess we can find someone maybe to use it, and I'm like just holding it now. It's like the dwarven thrower that you want. Oh, there. <laughs> no, uh, path of radiance is a little different. But it's a war hammer. It's a war hammer. It's a Warhammer. Um, curious enough. Um, yeah, Ketesh, give me a perception check. See if you s recognize the hammer, or s got a good look at the hammer. Oh, I rolled it. I rolled a d4 instead of a d. Please hold. Yeah, d4 is not going to work. My, my roller stripped is backwards. Okay. Hey, what was it? A perception check? Yes. Perception. Uh, so it's a 10. A minus. I forgot about that. Okay. Uh, given everything about it, it's... Do you recognize some parts of it? Uh, oh, because I have... Locked the grid. And, 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 and. With rolls like that, it's a miracle you notice anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you do recognize it. However, you did get high enough. A 10 is actually high enough. So don't worry about that. It's <laughs> high enough to at least remember it. <coughs> um, you've seen that mace before. The last time you saw it was uh, at training with the Argent Dawn. A uh, paladin uh, from the Silver Hand had come to visit uh, as a uh, guest uh, speaker teacher. Uh, and during this day event, whatnot, uh, some undead broke out. Uh, uh, undead uh, invasion broke out at, at like the North Gate. And it had overrun some people. And you remember this hammer flying over your head as the wielder, the bearer of it, charged forward and laid waste to everything he could. Um, it took him a while to do everything, but he did defend the, uh, the camp and made sure that everybody was safe. But it... It was no Ashbringer, but it was definitely a, a hammer worthy of uh, slaying undead. I take the hammer and I just give another bow to Valid and I say, uh, Yes, we appreciate this gift, um, but we really should be going. We're on an important task by King Greymane. Right, Audric? And we can't, we can't really delay, so we'll see you around. I'm later. sure you will, my child. Okay. Now I'll turn around and leave the chapel. Okay. As you guys turn around and leave the chapel, uh, you can hear the crystalline entities, the Naru above, uh, pulsating with uh, a radiating light, almost as if they're mourning the loss of a champion. At least they're not chanting about us. That's, that's good. Alright, let's get out of here. Uh, Ketesh, you watch as they, they exit uh, out of the chapel. They still have the Warhammer, which is kind of weird. But I'm carrying... 
I'm carrying it like this, and I clearly don't know what I'm doing with it. And I and I, I'm not whispering anymore. And I, because I come out, I look at Audrey, and I'm like, I don't know what the heck to do with this thing. Why is he giving? Why is it our destiny to take care of them? I don't want to use the term junk because it's clearly not junk, but druid, priest, like, what are we supposed to do with a giant warhammer? I don't know. I know how to store it. I heard that Private Velen was quite old. Is he perhaps senile? I think maybe that's possible. Would... <laughs> honestly, I mean, honestly, he didn't get a very good look at us if he thought we were the caretakers. <laughs> like. But Barely the more disturbing that part that. is that he said it was our des or fate or destiny to deal yeah, with but this people, people situation. People say destiny things like that's what they just say. That is what old people say to get you to do things. Okay, I'm old enough to know that any time an older, one hundred, one thousand year old person says it's your destiny, it's it's your destiny to do the dishes because I want you to do them, and I need them done. It's, it doesn't really mean anything, so I feel like it means they want you to like, do the dishes. Exactly. So I feel like he just wants us to figure out what to do with the hammer because he didn't know what to do with it. So he's like, "Oh, it's definitely entwined with your destiny. That's a thing." I'm gonna, well, I, that I'm gonna put the ha warhammer down now. Zombie guy was very powerful, and I do feel like we're probably gonna see him again. Unfortunately. Yeah, but what are they gonna do? Back him in the head with this thing? Maybe. Katesh, you're at least close enough to hear all of this. And if you've been following them, you've heard it all. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I want to see what I want to know. Who was carrying the Ashbringer? <laughs> I, I, I want to know. And now I'm less certain that I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. He's not introducing himself <laughs> to you guys. No, I'm just saying, like, <coughs> this is, well, yeah, well, we probably shouldn't have been carried to Ashbringer, all things considered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I, like, I put it down head first. I just kind of poke at the handle, watch it go, uh, like, kind of balance on the stone. Like, you can't wield weapons because Druid rules, and there's no way I can lift this in combat. How, I mean, how strong are you? I'm stronger, I thought. I, I am stronger. So I guess I'm going to be carrying it. That blows. That really blows. We need, like, a bag of holding or something for this thing, because I don't want to carry this <clears throat> on my back. Well, I think we're in a good city to find a bag of holding, it sounds like. Well, it's really too bad the king wasn't paying for everything. Let's go find the shop. I let take it over. I can't up. I hold it. And I just hold it as we're going to look for a shop. So are there other paladins, like, still looking around? Like, why do they still have it? Or have they all dispersed? Because the Ashbringer's not there anymore. Uh, no, they've all dispersed. Not necessarily because the Ashbringer's not there. They've just dispersed because they felt like it's uh, their duty has been fulfilled. So nobody's interested in this this um, super dope Warhammer thing that's still being carried around. Compared to the Ashbringer, no. <laughs> well, what can I say? So yeah. is it taller than me? Um, if you were to attune to it, uh, the way World of Warcraft physics work, uh, it would, <laughs> which is entirely stupid, don't get me started on that, uh, you have a feeling that, uh, what is this physics you speak of? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, you have a feeling you could, uh, wield this, let me double check your strength real quick. It would shrink to maybe no size. No. It's it would be considered a, a warhammer, a two-handed mace for you for certain, because it's uh, it's actually considered a one-handed or two-handed uh, weapon for a human. Oh, but I have to use a two-handed. That's not fun. 
Darn. I need to shrink. I need to. I needed to shrink smaller so I can wield it one-handed. Uh, 15, that's not too bad. Uh, you could wield it if you wanted to. Uh, you could wield it one-handed. You've held maces like that before. Uh, it's not monstrously large. Uh, it, it okay, is... so it's just like it's just like a warhammery mace, sort of. So is it like a hammer shape, or is it more like a like a rounded sort of clubby shape? Like, what does it what does it look like? Uh, it looks more like a uh, cylinder on, a, on the end of a stick, basically. Okay, so it, so it it looks a lot like a like a sledgehammer. Yeah. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, gold inlaid on it, as well as silver <coughs> that uh, in, encases the whole weapon. Yeah, I'm definitely following him. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to, <laughs> but. I'm gonna make sure my entrance is, doesn't like. Can I have the weapon, please? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, before we go shopping, maybe we should go check out the inn, the moonlit inn. Maybe we can at least put the hammer in the in the in the room. Then I don't have to carry it. Safe storage. <laughs> Hey, if it's our destiny, then no one will steal it from us. Exactly. <laughs> I volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> this could be interesting. Okay. If it's our we destiny, we'll just go missing, and then right dorks. before we like, need it, just... all of a sudden, like, person will just be driving. This is not Thor's it. hammer. It doesn't Fall zoom off back into your hand. Wagon, and then bam. Well, this is not Thor's hammer. It, it is Valen's fault that he entrusted this super cool hammer to two dorks who don't know how to use it. So what happens to it happens to it. <laughs> you would have, uh, in order to know what it does, you would have to take it to somebody who has identified it. Why would we do that? We don't even, we don't even care. <laughs> so I say we go to the Moonlit Inn first. Put our feet up, check out the rooms and the services, see if there's a brunch buffet. That'd be nice. A brunch buffet. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So, is that where y'all are going, or are you wanting to go elsewhere? Well, that sounds like a good plan. Okay. Except for the brunch buffet, we're just gonna go drop off the hammer, and then we're gonna go back. To the shop. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's probably a good plan. And brunch buffet can wait till tomorrow. Okay. Uh, as you guys travel through the city from the uh, uh, from the uh, the cathedral area, uh, you travel through uh, a number of different uh, locales of the. Uh, uh, of the city through the residential area and back towards the docks and um, you can see uh, you see that there are some signs here and there that do say go here for this area go here for that area uh, you find your way to the uh, moonlit area or the moonlit park as it's called and as you enter in um, uh, the light that is shining brightly in every other district goes dim and it goes into more of a full moon style atmosphere. Oh yes. Uh, this is more like it. Uh, matter of fact, as you as you enter this area, you note uh, the guards seem to have changed a little bit. There's no longer humans and dwarves and whatnot. Uh, there are night elves who are guarding this area. Uh, and as you walk in, uh, this is definitely a night elven area. And, uh, let's see. Show you that one? Yep. Uh, you totally turn into an animal. You would fit right in here. They wouldn't even know you weren't enough. <laughs> and the moonlit inn. After I shrink Kitesh down a little. Because he's idle. Well, no, everybody is. Uh, the moonlit inn. But he in particular is little. The Moonlit Inn sits before you. Uh, it's uh, very night elven styled architecture. 
uh, open walls except for the rooms areas, uh, room areas, and uh, it's got the uh, the wood kind of almost not carved but more shaped into place. Like people have grown the trees to form this shape uh, instead of uh, cutting it out and then making it fit like this. Uh, Oriana, you are very much at home. This is this is Night Elf City, basically. Uh, I found my World of Warcraft character. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> oh no! That's the exact hairstyle that he has. Oh, you found him. Okay. Oh, you guys are still too big. Uh, oops. <laughs> That's right, because you're an evil horde blood elf. Uh, should mm -hmm. be there. But Prophet Velen is my buddy, so that means I'm not evil. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Kitesh, okay then. you've been Doesn't following it? them for a while. They've gone towards the uh, the moonlit park, and you know the place. It's the place where uh, the Raven's Gaze is, and you know the area fairly well. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go inside after they go inside. I'm gonna see what they're doing. Okay. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go up to the bartender and we say, um, excuse me, I believe King Greymane paid for rooms for Oriana and Audrey. Where are those located? Oh well, let me see. And she pulls up a really big book as this uh, young, youngish night elf uh, lady who uh, uh, seems to be a similar age to you, but night elven age is like very difficult to judge, anyways. But uh, she seems to have a very younger appearance, and she pulls out this huge book. Uh, about three feet, uh, yeah, about three feet across, and she opens it up, poof, and goes, "Okay, let me see here." And it is definitely a logbook, a uh, book, uh, uh, reservation books. And she flips to the last page and finds it, and is like, "Oh, oh yes, uh, you're with King Greymane. Okay, all right. Well, here are your keys, then." And she hands each of you a key. Make a perception check as she hands you the key. Is she actually handing us a skin? Nope. This guy says a key. It's a mimic. Make a <laughs> perception check to know what it is. I got I 19. Is it the key or is it food? I don't know. Uh, it is. Uh, yeah, Oriana, it's a key. Looks cool. There's paper there, but you notice the key. It's nice and gold and shiny, so it's a key. Uh, Audric, uh, you notice the uh, there's the key, and then there's the paper underneath it. Uh, as you open it up and flip through it real quick, it uh, has a list of services and whatnot that are available, uh, including uh, breakfast uh, at... Uh, or meals of uh, at all uh, served at all times. Uh, ale... Uh, and their house specialty, the wine. Uh, and then it gives you a list of other things, uh, sights to see here in uh, the Moonlit Park, including the Moonwell, uh, the uh, the forest, uh, the Druid Forest, as well as the, uh, the Raven's Gaze. Uh, and then it has an asterisk and it says paid promotion. Why does the raven's gaze sound familiar? Have I, I might just mixing that it up? Might be, maybe it's ale. I, I did. I do have my brewmaster's achievement, but I don't, I don't remember all of it. I have no clue, because I kind of just ripped the name. I don't know I, where I got it from, so... I take the key, I say thank you, and I head up to the... Can I make a perception check just to see if I notice that this person has been following us all the way back to our inns from the cathedral? That Katesh has been following? Uh, yeah. Uh, Katesh also rolls stealth. I say Oriana has not noticed. Yeah. Unfortunately not. She's been too busy and too enamored with the... Uh, Ooh. Ooh. Uh, that is going to be a 22. 21. No! Ha-ha! No! <laughs> Uh, so we got a 22 versus a 21. Would it be passive intel, passive, passive perception? Because <laughs> is he looking for people following him? 
that's the I thing. Feel like that's... Why are you looking for uh, to see if somebody followed you, Kyrath? I, I would probably be passive. I mean, and you had weapons, and Oriana's dragging this giant weapon, so I wanted to see if everybody that was following us before is no longer following it. Um, everybody who was following you before, uh, you know, flat out, they all went their separate ways. Uh, for this, since you were actively <laughs> trying to see, you do notice that uh, you do have a small follower behind you, but as to his intent, that's another story. <coughs> but inside of this inn, it's very nice. There's a couple of people floating about, and even a couple of dwarves at the uh, at the bar, kind of drinking. Uh, some getting a little rowdy, some not. Oriana has ignored them and gone off to do whatever she wishes, assuming she finds the door. Well, I guess I'm just going to take note of this person and be like, when we go shopping, hopefully he's not still following us. Otherwise, it's definitely going to be super sketchy. Patrick, are you coming? Yeah, I'll go follow Oriana. Okay. Uh, you find your room to be quite amenable. Um, there's a, a divider between some of the be uh, between the beds. Uh for privacy and whatnot, uh, they seem to sell uh, rooms in pairs of two, or in groups of two, and this is not the only floor. There's like multiple floors on this end. Uh, fairly large night elven building. Uh, but there are dividers between the two beds, and it is uh, very spacious, very luxurious. Uh, the beds are very, very night elven, uh, but they're also very soft night elven, so they feel really good. Great. I walk in, I throw the hammer down on the ground, I shove it under the <coughs> bed. I, I snap my fingers, cast precipitation on it, and I make it smell like death. Like what? Like death. Like death. Like a dead body that's rotted in the sun for about three days. Okay. Just immediately. <coughs> no, Oriana, it changes something. No. I don't have locks on the door. This is the only way to ensure no one's going to steal it. No one's going to steal my hammer if it smells like this. Yeah, we have to sleep in here. Well, I can turn it off when we come back. Just pluck your nose. And I walk <laughs> out of the room. <laughs> okay. You have done such? There is now a smelly hammer underneath your bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I use Druidcraft to make the smell of nice flowers appear in front of my face, so that I can't smell it. <laughs> um, okay. Nice flowers. Uh, Ketesh, you see Some these nice two... Nice lavender flowers. Yeah, you see these two walk into the, uh, into the room, and then close the door, and then walk out about two minutes later, and um, uh, depending on how close you get to them, depends on how much smell you get. Well, I'm really just trying to figure out what they're doing with the hammer. So, okay. If I don't, if I don't see them with the hammer anymore, I'm gonna stay in the inn. Oh yeah, yeah. You notice that? That is the first thing you noticed. Um, they went into the room with the hammer and left without it. <laughs> you probably heard the slamming. <laughs> it was not done stealthily, so you did hear the thunk thunk and. The all right, yeah, I'll just I'll go up to the bar and I'll just order like a mead or something. Mead sounds good. Mead, okay. It's autumnal, an autumnal mead. <laughs> uh, she pours you a uh, nice. Uh, the innkeeper pours you a nice little glass of uh, uh, mead, and she looks at you and go and asks, uh, "Dwarven or gnomish?" Let's do dwarven, I think. Okay. She hands you a cup that, uh, to you, is about uh, 12 inches tall. And like a good 12 inch, or about a good 9 inches wide. And it's got a good handle on it. It's only 12 inches tall to him, to other people. 
space is distorted. <laughs> it's not 12 inches. No, it's 12 inches. 12 inches tall. The, a couple, of, the couple of dwarves that have been sitting at the table have gone through like three of them. Right. So I'm just gonna like sip and sit in the corner and see what, and just kind of like chill out. Moving in the corner. Yeah, I am. I am now Strider. I am Strider, mm -hmm. except without the hood. I'm a gnome. I, I come, so I come back downstairs, look around the area. This place is kind of dead. I was hoping there would be more lively night elf partying. Uh, what you didn't, anyway. what you didn't notice is that there's a cat on the bar, and the cat has now appeared on your shoulders. And it is now rubbing against you lovingly. Oh, there's a kitty. Andre, there's a kitty. I, take I see. My shoulder, and I hold it up to Very him. Very cute. Pet it. I pet it. Uh, as you reach out for it, Audric, uh, the kitty disappears and bamps away uh, back onto Oriana's shoulder. When we say disappear, does that mean, like, teleporting? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Crap. Crap, crap, and I run back into the room. Wow! <laughs> and the cat what? leaps off your back, and the cat didn't want to go upstairs. Okay, well, as soon as it's it's off my shoulder and I'm in the hallway, I just like lean up against the wall, and I like look back to see if the cat follows. The cat is sitting down at the bottom of the stairs, looking up at you, twitching his tail. <laughs> I walk to the base of the stairs, and then I look at the cat. And I look at Oriana, and I'm like, uh, what's going on? What? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I go up the stairs. I lean in. What? That's a familiar. That means arcane magic. It's a big no-no in -no and I love stuff. I don't want them coming back to me. I can do that. So why is it in this night elf area? I don't know. And why is it camping under my shoulder? It's I not know. that crazy ladies, is it? Which, like, I didn't see, was there a crazy lady? I only saw, like, a gnome what and a night elf. A, a gnome no, you know, that lady who tried to murder us <laughs> and have a zombie. What's your pass? You mean the, you mean the gnome? Okay, twelve. The fireball, fireball. No! That lady oh, with the zombie knight who wanted to kill you and paralyze all of us. Oh, well, I don't think a mule would have a familiar. That's just dumb. Kitesh, what you see downstairs is a hilarious sight. You see these two uh, come downstairs and then the cat from the bar just bamf on his shoulder and then bamf around them and then they dashed upstairs, and from where you're sitting, you see the innkeeper just going, <laughs> and is dying of laughter down below. Uh, you got, uh, Audric, Oriana, you two can both barely hear laughter. I go to investigate the laughter. Uh, as you walk downstairs, uh, the cat thumps your uh, boot and then bamps over to the uh, uh, the table and just sits there. And Kyra, uh, Kylar is frozen. I'm sorry, Kylar. That's a terrible look for you, man. <laughs> Kylar has disconnected. Oh, no. Uh, as you come downstairs, you see uh, the innkeeper just kind of bent over a little bit laughing at your reactions. <laughs> Is the innkeeper a night elf? Oh, no. Yes, she is indeed a night elf. Now that uh, I see the cat has left is the this bottom Is this your cat? Stairs, I come back down. Uh, you ask her. She breathes a second and looks up and says, Yes, that's my cat. Do you practice arcane magic? No, I do I'm not. Right. Why would I do that? Why can this cat teleport? Come here, Snookums. And she holds up a, a little kitty treat, and the cat walks over <laughs> on the bar over to it. And she's not a familiar, if that's what you're thinking. She's a displacer beast. 
Yeah. Have I heard of a displacer beast? Displacer beast. It's, 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 it's an adorable. Yes, it's a small, adorable, cute-looking cat. With now that you're looking at it, two little tentacles on its back that just kind of twitch with its tail. It has tentacles. Two of them. Um, yeah, they kind of they kind of come off of like where its back legs, like its haunches on its back legs, and then they kind of curl forward. Usually. I like peek out. Now that I'm here in this conversation, I peek out and I look at it. I put my I put my head back against the wall. I look at Ajik. <laughs> and then I uh, I straighten up and I just I, I walk out like it was perfectly everything's perfectly fine. Uh, as soon as you come out, uh, the dis- uh, the uh, little kitty bamps onto your uh, shoulders and starts loving on you a little bit. Oh, Audrey, do you have Audrey, Audrey, do you have food? You always have food. Uh, sure. Yes, I have food. <laughs> I have some. I guess I grab some beef jerky out of my rations. Okay. A tiny I piece. Think, I think getting feed it to the kitty. Uh, okay. She takes the smell of it and is kind of looks at it. A little bit studying it, and then slowly takes a little bite, and then bumps off your off your shoulder with the food, and is now on the bar gnawing away at the jerky. Ah, your kitty cat is so cute. By the way, we're new here. Do you know places where someone might buy like I don't know magical items, bag of holding, something like that? You didn't read the pamphlet, did you? Okay. And she holds up an, uh, another pamphlet that she hands out with every key and points to the bottom line and says, uh, you should probably check out Raven's Gaze then. It's the local uh, local magic shop here at, uh, here in the Moonlit Park and they hold, uh, they carry a lot of, uh, a lot of things those who study arcane and whatnot would like to know. I know with the city being the way it, is, uh, way it has been the last couple of weeks, it's been hard to find anything like that. And also, since Dalaran has arrived, the f- floating city of arcane stupidity... Um, anyway, uh, since they've arrived, it's been a little difficult to find any reading material anywhere. Any what material? Reading material. Reading? What do you mean? Like they bought all the books? Yes. Oh, cool. Well, anyway, thank you for that. Um, cute cat. Super, super on board with that. <laughs> we should go, Ajik. And I leave. <laughs> okay, Oriana leaves. Uh, Audric, you're kind of stuck watching Oriana be awkward and all that, and you're like, <laughs> okay. And do you follow suit, or do you do anything else? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll go. I just I'll look around the room, see if I strange gnome anywhere. A strange gnome? A strange gnome? <laughs> what is this? Um, <laughs> uh, as you gaze out at the room, you, you do see a gnome here, but he's not strange. Uh, you see a couple of dwarves sitting there, uh, sitting next to the bar, having a little drinking contest. Oh, a thousand bottles of air on the ball, a thousand bottles of air kind of thing, and they keep going back and forth, <laughs> drinking another one and another one and another one. Uh, and then there's a uh, high elf who's sitting in a corner sipping some wine. Uh, seems to have a book propped up in his lap and is reading it. Uh, there's also a druidess uh, in, uh, next to one of the tables and is kind of uh, just eating a small meal uh, almost like she might have forgot breakfast kind of thing okay well, I'll follow after Oriana okay Kit- uh, Kitesh you see them both leave and exit out and uh did anybody react to them carrying a giant hammer and making <laughs> loud thumpy sounds? Uh, no, they did not. 
Okay, noted. Why did my door not... Oh, now the door locks. Oh, great. I'll fix that later. Maybe. Okay. I'll fix that later. Uh, anyways, uh, okay, so you two head off towards uh, he head off towards uh, down the way to the Raven's Gaze. I need you both to give me a perception check. Another perception check. Yay! Another one, another one, and another. Just don't ask me to make any more perception checks. <laughs> but you're so good at them. Oh, like me. No. Oh, Kyra has oh. very perceptive. Oh, he oh, he does. sees it. Uh, I think you, that, that, yes, it, we always rely on Kyra to actually see the things, not not me or you. Okay. Uh, Kyra, you, know, you notice the sign uh, of it is wooden carved, uh, and it has a uh, a raven's eye in the center, um, and it uh, looks to be like a normal bookstore. The only thing is, is with that roll, uh, very much so. You see some of the interior designs of the uh, of the eye carved into it. Uh, there is a moon on one side of it, on the top side of the eye, that is shining light down to a uh, field of water. Tippity tappity. I like tappity. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't really mean anything to me, does it? Uh, the moon symbol looks very familiar. Because you've looked down and saw it on Oriana's hand several times. Mm. But uh, hey, it looks like there's a moon shining down onto a field of water. Yeah, that's 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 a moon. We're in night elf country simple. now. I just kind of like take my hand out, like, and just tap it, like you know, kind of like team tap it or something. <laughs> A football player, yeah. like, yeah, and then I hit it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you hit it. It starts swaying in the in the breeze. And I go into the I go into the the Raven's gaze, and I say, I say, hello. I'm looking for the owner of this shop. What the person to sell me the things? Person. That person. They'll sell you the things. <laughs> no one will sell you the things. Oh, at last. I hear ya. Uh, give it a few moments. Uh, the owner of the establishment will be uh, by in just a moment. Take him, uh, <laughs> Take your time and peruse what you need. Um, I don't need to peruse. I have one thing I want to buy and that's it. I might peruse later. I just have a busy day. All right. In that case, can I help you find anything? Yes, a bag of holding big enough for a giant warhammer. Say that uh, again, lass. I'm a little hard of hearing today. A bag of holding for a giant warhammer. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you guys have been talking to this uh, dwarf, stubby dwarf, um, he's got a red beard and a red mohawk with uh, tribal tattoos written uh, in blue ink along his face and at his sides are uh, a pair of axes. Alright, let me tell Natty about that and uh, we'll see if we can't get you uh, set up. And then he takes a couple steps towards the uh, what looks to be a path into a kitchen style area and he while not leaving this same area he yells out Hey, Nadi, you got a couple of customers looking for a bag of holding? Big enough for a warhammer. That's very crucial. <laughs> I think you might want to be uh, helping them out anytime soon. All right, all right, all right. Give me just a moment. Just last little bit on this experiment. I I'll be there in a second. And as you uh, look to the sun, it 
these sundials and whatnot that are scattered across the room and the gnomish clock that's on the wall. It goes tick, tick, tick. About five minutes later, uh, you both hear a little bit of a uh, poof as sparkles tend to uh, seem to uh, just kind of spatter in front of the door that uh, leads into the kitchen. And he goes, Ah, finally! Finally, Mary's going to love this. And he puts it, uh, it sounds like he puts something aside and then comes walking out with a cloth and is wiping glitter from off his hands and off his face. Ah, what can I do for you guys? Well, I've already said this three times, so we messed with your leg by now, but I guess not. I'm looking for a bag of holding. Big enough. Or a giant floor hammer to be stored in it. I don't think this is very hard to understand. Now, how much bigger than a warhammer are you wanting? Are you wanting something that just carries barely a warhammer? Or are you wanting something that carries a little bit more than that? Or maybe something well, that carries a lot more? Well, if we throw other crap in there, too, that would be useful. Okay, again, how big do you want? Audrey, how much gold do we have? Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one of those cells. Okay. And he I pull, waves. I pull aside. <laughs> I, I, I pull Audrey aside and whisper in his ear this time. Audrey, how much gold do we have? Some gold. <laughs> you watch as he does a some. couple arcane runes real quick, and then a small dimension opens up and he pulls out one bag, two bags, three bags, four, five, and six bags and lays them on a table in front of you guys and then closes his hand around the little gap and goes whoosh. You know, let's just simplify things. Why don't you tell me how expensive your biggest bag is and we'll just go down the line. And he looks at you and says, that's what I just did. This one, yes, and he did. points to the one at the far right. This one is my most expensive. It runs at about 10,000 gold pieces. Next. It'll... Okay. This one is my next expensive. It's about uh, se uh, 7,000 gold pieces. Next. Okay. That's one, two, three. Uh, this is uh, the next biggest one. Uh, I have it holds, or uh, it's about, if I remember right, about 2,000. That's three. Roger, how much gold do you have? Eight hundred. <laughs> I also have eight hundred. That means we have sixteen hundred gold. Next. <laughs> All right, and then he'll uh, goes down to the next one, and it's uh, this is getting a little bit smaller, but this one uh, is about uh, nine hundred gold pieces. That one, we want that one. What? What? How much is it? Oh. Versus the other one. How much does that other one hold? Uh, this one versus the last one, I, I assume, uh, which mm -hmm. is uh, the last one is going to be about uh, 200 gold pieces. This one holds about, uh, it will hold just enough for the Warhammer, uh, about 10 cubic feet. Why don't we, uh, we don't, we, what are we going to spend this money on anyway? This thing will let us hold other <coughs> things and it will be great and I won't have to look at Wait, so out. the smallest one holds 10 cubic feet or this 900 gold one costs 10? The cheapest one holds nine, uh, holds, holds 10 uh, cubic feet. Uh, the one that he, uh, that you have been eyeing, the one that holds, um, or the one that costs about 900 gold, uh, holds about uh, 50 cubic feet. We could fit a whole person in here, at least a gnome. I Wait, how much does the $2,000 gold one? Uh, 2000 Uh, you ask him that, he Audrey, these are tries to remember back a little bit, opens it up, and goes, oh yes, uh, this one will hold about 200 cubic feet. 50 cubic feet is fine, we'll fill that, we will, it'll be a long time before we fill that up with enough crap that we'll need a new one. <laughs> yeah, I, that one. The 900 one? Alright. Mm -hmm. Uh, gold first. At least let me see. <laughs> I think whatever. this is worth 400 gold. You think this is worth 400 gold? I'm the one who enchanted it. Why? <laughs> you 
You suck at this. If you wanted to negotiate, you should have told me. That's what I do. Okay, then negotiate. I only have 100 gold. <laughs> No, you don't. Anyway. <coughs> well, my friend's a little bit, as you can see, uncomfortable with the price. So, I think it's only fair that I try and fill this out. Let's see here. Obviously, he's spent a great deal of time chanting this. As, and as someone who has spent time studying these things, I do understand the effort that is put into this. So I would say a more fair price would be somewhere around the range of... 600 gold. Roll persuasion. Roll to negotiate for the price. <laughs> Sorry, Kyra, or Kyla, I didn't, <laughs> didn't realize that we're going to go haggle down he everything. He's negotiating. He's uh -oh. negotiating. Hold on, bud. The greatest roll ever. You definitely persuaded him. So great. It's He's a super persuaded. He looks at you. Eight hundred. I can't go down to six hundred. Seven fifty. Roll another persuasion. Looks at you, studies you really, qu really closely. All right, seven fifty it is. And he extends a you hand. Are a fair oh. You are a fair man indeed. Audrey, pay the man. <laughs> I thought you had the money. That, but that was before I had to negotiate. I was going to pay more. <coughs> I just look at her. <laughs> I give her. <laughs> I give her a three hundred gold. It's fine. I take the three hundred and I take the rest out of my and give it to him. Okay. He hands you the bag. Uh, there we go. I hope you uh, will enjoy it and use it safely. Yes, you know. Thank you. Dollar N is in town. I always say use it safely. Okay. So, you paid 300 with 750. So, I paid 450. Cool. We spent our money, Kyra, on something. <laughs> wow. You're doing it wrong. You hoard money like a dragon. <laughs> Just swim in but mountains we, of gold. I don't think 800 do gold is hoarding money. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is you messed up. You gotta. You have to start hoarding it. So you have a hoard of, of treasure, <laughs> which is just gold. Well, now we can hold hoard 50 cubic feet. Eat of gold. That's a lot of gold. I'm not gonna lie, that's a lot of gold. <laughs> you, you could at least swim in it. <laughs> what, is, what are you doing while we're negotiating ridiculously? Yes. What are you doing, Kitesh? Uh, uh... <clears throat> they seem to be gone and have been taking their time. So. Okay, yeah, then I'm going up to the bar, uh, the, the bar person. <clears throat> okay. So those those two guys over that were here, that you gave the keys to. They had the ash bringer. Not really sure why they had the ash bringer. Just the whole parade thing. It was crazy. You know anything about it? I'm trying to figure it out. I just it just seemed really. Interesting. Oh my, I didn't know they, they had the Ashbringer. I've not heard anything about that. Uh, right? 
So, oh, like, my. it's kind of cool. Like, that could be, like, a big thing. If you find out who they are, it could be, like, a big, like, I don't know if they're important, but, like, you could be, like, the heroes, whoever, like, stayed here, they brought the Ashbringer to town, could be, like, a good revenue. Oh, yes. I don't know. I was, I was following him around. I was hoping to maybe talk to him, meet him. Because, you know, among the paladins, it's sort of a big deal. <laughs> oh, yes, that would be. And she pulls up the book again and starts looking through to see where where the, uh, where their names might be. And she looks through and sees, well, I don't have their names. I just have that they're with Gen Greymane. I don't have their names. He reserved a large uh, portion of the uh, of the inn, and it's been a pain to kind of keep it set aside. But apparently, they're in town now, which is good. Do I know? And how much do I? I, I how much do I know about this king person? Again, uh, yes. you know quite a bit, uh, at least from a uh, from an alliance standpoint, and, and you've been dealing with uh, or lived in uh, where you have um, you know he's the king of Gilneas uh, he's been a staunch uh, advocate for defense uh, against the scourge against the undead and has uh, closed up the walls to his city uh, to his country and has uh, tried to stand up against the scourge uh, for quite a number of years a couple of years since they started Well, I'm sure they'll show back up. Maybe I'll meet them then, and then we'll get their names, and then you can, we can figure out why they had the Ashbringer, and you can use that as a historical note. Yes, I could use that quite well. It would, uh, the home of the Ashbringer. I can market that. Right, they had some other sort of hammer thing with them, too. Like, it was definitely powerful paladin weapon but they still had it they they dropped off the chapel walked back and like still had it so that was kind of interesting whoever was in the chapel must have decided they were worthy so they must be some pretty important people that is entirely possible oh this could be the deliverers of the ashbringer right. oh, I'm, I'm Katesh by the way Katesh Light Pierce pleasure to meet you oh it's a pleasure to meet you Constance Constance Rock well, anyway, so, like, if you see me kind of just hanging out, buying a couple of drinks, it's because I'm waiting to talk to them, because I want to feel find out what their deal is. I've All been right. traveling a lot. want to figure out, you know, what's what's been going on. Oh, completely understandable. Uh, did you know about the marriage? The marriage is, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I heard about it. I'm in town for the meeting, though. Oh! heard about that. It's supposed to be fairly big about some uh, uh, with some uh, big uh, big name people. That's why Gen is that's why King Greymane is here. Yeah, Lady Prestor uh, asked me to come, so here I am. Oh, Lady Prestor asked for you? Oh my! I, what's your name again? Katesh Light Pierce. Uh, you may have heard of me as Dragonfell. Oh! The dragon fell has stayed here, and you see, she's got uh, on on the wall. She's got a list of people's names, uh, so and so the ti uh, and then so and so the so and so has stayed here and such. And she's writing down, and on the slip, it goes, "That's very good. I I, I will put this on my list of people who have stayed here." Right. Well, guess we're just hanging out until they show back up. Oh yes. Uh, did you want me to uh, want me to tell them that you're here? And somebody would like to meet with them. I'll do my own introduction, but uh, appreciate it. Ah, no problem. So that's what I was doing while you were negotiating nonsense. <laughs> I would love to have, uh, have us walked in during that conversation at some point, <laughs> like make our own entrance, like we do. Not quite. Uh, as you leave the bar, she's 
putting the uh, the paper up inside of a uh, inside of a plaque that goes onto the wall uh, and is littered with several with a bunch of names on there, uh, including w uh, one that's got a spotlight uh, and it says Malfurion, Storm Rage, and Tyrande Was uh, Whisperwind, and it has got that centered there and. That's about all the text you could read. Uh, it looks like there was a little bit more underneath it. Okay. So as soon as I have the bag of holding, I come, I'm okay. coming back to the inn. Okay. Don't want to leave that fancy hammer there too long. Wait, what was this about Malfurion? He stayed at the inn. You don't know. You don't. You know. didn't look at the. You didn't look at the list of famous know. people who have no. stayed here. List. I. I the, saw the, the thing. Notes. It's for the notes. Yes. Yeah. Um, for the notes, it would uh, there is a plaque uh, detailing uh, who all has uh, stayed at this particular inn, including a uh, dual plaque for uh, Malfurion Storm Rage and Tyrande Whisperwind. And you don't know what else because the rest of the print is hidden, or is too small for people to look at. You have to get close to it, or get binoculars. Yeah. Gnomish binoculars, which are like, instead of, you know, like being like this long, yeah, gnomish binoculars are like this long and like this tall. <laughs> Super inconspicuous. Oh, yeah. No there's one would ever that, expect it. Yeah, there's a strap that slips onto the back of your head and you have to hold them up like this. <laughs> the laser goggles. They're not binoculars, they're laser goggles. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyways, um, as you guys, uh, Finish your business over at the uh, at the uh, Raven's Gaze. Uh, anything else you're gonna do before nope, you okay. leave? Nope. Okay. Oh. Thank you guys. Come again. Of course. Thank Next you. Welcome. We'll be we'll per be perusing a little bit more. Have a good day. All right. Thank you. You too. Have a good day. And you hear from the back, uh, the dwarf uh, yell, "Oh!" You ch did you chase them off already? I figured you'd be able to get at least a couple of thousand out of them. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> As we walk back into the door of the tavern, I'm like opening the bag and let's see. What do I have in my inventory? <laughs> you start stuffing things into the bag. Yeah. Let's see, I put the potion of invisibility in there. I'm putting my extra backpack in there. I'm putting my bed like I'm just like I'm just putting every my, oh my healer's kit and my rest kit. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, oh, and the water walkers for sure, because I'm not wearing the boots anymore. <laughs> it's, I picked those up. I show them, like at least like I'm doing this as I'm walking from the entrance of to up to my room. <laughs> Okay, Tess, you see this night elf uh, lady just got a bag of holding and is just going whoop, 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 as she heads up the stairs. And then Audric is, uh, or the uh, human uh, male, is just kind of following behind her. It's yeah, so as they, walk, as they walk in, I'm just, I'm sitting at the bar and I'm just like, Toast for bearers of the Ashbringer! <laughs> oh, oh, those people better than the Ashbringer here! Oh, let's give them a round of applause and a toast! And a couple of the dwarves have... The two dwarves at the bar have now uh, come forward and have surrounded both you and... Uh, or Audric, uh, you and Ariana. Uh, and I just I look around and I'm like, the Ashbringer? Where? Who's Ashbringer? I, I steal the bag of holding and I let you watch. Did you tell anybody while, we, while I was down here? <laughs> you two both just came in. The dwarves have assumed it's you two. Uh, they've uh, taken hold of uh, of you uh, in some fashion, whether by grabbing your leg or by grabbing your uh, shirt or, or uh, robes, and they've started raising glasses. Oh, congratulations, the betters of the Ashbringer. We're glad you came by. We're glad you stopped by. We're so honored to have you here today. And each one of them raises a mug to the betters of the Ashbringer and tip their heads back. <laughs> oh, we're so cool. 
<laughs> Did I see who started this toad? Uh, good question. Make a perception check, uh, Kitesh. Make a uh, if you're trying to hide, uh, make a deception check. No, I'm 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 just at the bar. <laughs> okay. Eighteen. Okay. Uh, it was from a gnome at the bar. I'll go over to him. Once you get the on off your, your legs. <laughs> yeah. I thought you weren't. I thought we weren't telling people about Audric. Why? Why did you say something? I didn't. Well, then, does anyone? Know? I told me I'll go talk to that guy over there who's dead. Guy. Some, that gnome over there. That With one's that. been here for since we got here. Yeah, he was following us here. What? No, I would have noticed if someone was following us. Oh, really? Yes, I'm very perceptive. Okay, I walk up to the gnome. Okay. What time of day is it? It's about 11. In the morning? Yep. I say, good morning, sir. Good morning. Morning! And before you two uh, is a gnome. Uh, you may describe yourself and all that. Right, so he's wearing uh, shiny plate mail armor, except he doesn't wear a helmet. He's got a uh, sword and sheath, shield on his back. Uh, on the shield um, in the corner, there's a red heart. Um, it's also on like upper left corner of the armor. Pretty small, but there. Um, the rest of his armor is pretty much just silver. Um, he's got uh, a narrowish face, blonde hair. Looks pretty young, although most gnomes look like they're like five and or old because they have weird facial hair. Uh, he does not have any facial hair whatsoever. And he is sitting there with a large um meat like the large uh <clears throat> the thing of meat in front of him yep there's a very large cup in front of him so my friend here says you've been following us but I told him that couldn't possibly be true so who are you and why are you following us my name's K Kachesh Light Pierce and of of course I was following you. You come into town, bury the Ashbringer. You go into the chapel. You come back out with the Warhammer still. There's clearly a story behind that. It's so interesting. I just wanted to meet you. Figure out your story. Like how the Ashbringer's been... As far as I know, nobody's had the Ashbringer. Where did you find the Ashbringer? That's just... That's so cool. You don't want to know the story. I think you're wrong. I think I do want. I think the bartender wants to know the story. I think I want to know the story. And the bartender ha is sitting with her hands crossed and is like just waiting to hear the story. I mean, it get hurt to tell. Well, unfortunately, we don't always story. get what we want in life. Adric, trust me, it's Adric, better that way. Not just a thing rude. We found it at sea. No. We, we, mm. oh, we found it at sea. Oh, Wait. interesting. We found it at sea. No. Sea I, I pull Orion to the side. I'm like, during no, we shouldn't just be telling people. I'm not going to tell them the truth, obviously. He's going to make a story. I'm not that sensitive. <laughs> I just want a story, and we're probably going to get free drinks out of it, so. Technically, your so, and board is all covered because the game is paying yeah, for that. that. She forgot about that. <sighs> she pushes Audric aside. So my friend, he's just bashful. He never likes bragging about how awesome we really are. Anyway. Yes. It was a terrible storm. And we came across a, a, a vessel all on its own. It seemed to be abandoned. 
and when we got there, it see there we found the Ashbringer and the hammer. It seemed like some paladins had gone had run aground and there was some trouble. And uh, we just cleaned up the ship and brought it back, and you know, there were, there was, and we were like, obviously these things should not just be running around the ocean. Wait, 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 wait. So, so you found a ship. And then you thought that it had run aground, but it was in the middle of the ocean. I'm not following. There were, yeah, there were, we were in this like rocky part. I was like, I think it was left over from the cataclysm. Anyway, the original one. Anyway, we we uh, so we 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 had been able to avoid the stalactites that were in the middle of the sea. Different kind, not the, the cave dropping one. The ones that stay. anyway, they were there, rather large. Uh, There's any help in the but then everyone was dead, which is really unfortunate. But uh, the Helen was out there, and we gave the we were able to give the paladins a proper burial, which was, like, I think, really the, the real thing that we took away from them. So, where did you bury them if they were at sea? <laughs> at sea, we buried them at sea. I think I said that. Give me a deception. I have a pre- check. I have a- I'm a priestess. That's it. I can perform rites at sea. <clears throat> Zary, give me a deception check. Oh, that's good. Uh, well, it sounds like a perfect story. Uh, it sounds like a good story. I, I believe them. I believe them. What are your names? And she pulls out. A, I'm Oriana. Oriana? Oriana Oriana Moonsong. Moonsong. Okay. And what is your name, sir? She's looking at you, Audric. Audric's your mic is dead. Muted. Your mic is dead. Yeah, I didn't say anything anyways though, so She's just looking I just at you. look and I'm like uh His I'm name is Audric. Nobody important. Oh right, yes, of course. Come in with the king of Gilnaeus, and Audrey and they give you the war hammer of a paladin back to keep a hold of, and you're just you're just nobody, right? Of course, no nobody. That's what I I also am a nobody, totally no one. No one has ever heard of me. Wait, no, that's wrong. That is completely. You incorrect. speak to all the nobodies you meet with such condition. I'm going with you're not a nobody. You've clearly at least done something. And he saved King's life once. Oh, see, there you go. Not nothing. Oh. Stories. Now, what is your name? What did, you, what did you say? I said you saved the King's life once. Oh. What? His name. His name was Audrey. What is your name? Sorry, <laughs> too deep in this. Oh, his name is Audrey. Audrey, what? Just Audrey. Okay, just Audrey. Mm-hmm. And she puts the two new cards up in the uh, list of famous people. <gasps> the and then I, when I look over, do I see then Tilrande and Malfurion? Uh, yes. Make a perception check to see what it says <gasps> underneath them. Oh, that's sad. Also, oh, you nervous. see me on there. <laughs> <laughs> you do indeed see him. <laughs> oh. I got a 16. I got... I got an 18. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, you see on there, uh, Malfurion, Storm, Ra- Storm Rage, and Tyrande Whisperwind, who were just recently married. This was their honeymoon inn. <gasps> yes. I get, I get super excited, and I look over. Oh, check! Tyrande was here! Oh, my God! Wait, Malfurion was here, though. We need to find Malfurion. But Malfurion. Uh, excuse me, innkeeper. How recently were they here, exactly? Oh, they've been here f- uh, a number of weeks now. They uh, did a joint marriage with. Are they currently here? I'm they- assuming they're staying for the meeting. That would yes. make sense to me. Well, they uh, they they had a joint marriage with uh, King. Uh, 
Arthas Menethil to uh, uh, Jaina Menethil now, and she's uh, they've uh, been celebrating for the past month, and the meeting is to kind of get them back into the real world, as it were. There's a, there's a, there's a meeting? meeting? What? The, that's the meeting we're going to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, see? Oh, the nobodies who were invited to the super, the oh, super important meeting. Oh, you were invited meeting. to the meeting, too? Right. Oh, my word. Right. We, were just, we, just were, we were just invited to eat the sandwiches. <laughs> Right, talk about the skirt. Were there some guards for yeah, King Greymane? Hmm? Say again? Oh, right. Were there some yeah, the guards for King Greymane? His escort. Oh, yes, some of the guards who ended up uh, bearing the Ashbringer to the uh, Cathedral of Light. You've got to be kidding me. You are more than just. more than just simple gods. Oh, well, I'm a high priest. That's a bit. Oh, she pulls out your your name and starts writing High Priestess of a Loon on it. Puts it back. It's very it's very cool, I must admit. But yes, you, you guys also see uh, just above your names uh, is uh, Katesh the Dragonfell. Oh wait, Katesh, isn't that your name? <laughs> well, if you clearly were not entrusted with the Warhammer for your intelligence. <laughs> I think you just can't Excuse me, up. sir. Oriana is quite intelligent. Okay. I've solved many puzzles on my own. Yeah, I helped slay a dragon. Well, slayed a dragon a while ago. What Four. color of dragon? Black. Blackwing. Flight, obviously. Duh. You were in the battle against Blackwing? No, not Blackwing him. Black dragon flight. Yes, but not Blackwing himself. Black, the Black dragon flight. And it would no. be Deathwing, not Blackwing. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Black dragon flight, Deathwing. All it all blends together. It does. A, yep. Don't worry. Don't worry. It does blend. Together. I know the character is the name and the flight all merged into one thing in this moment. <clears throat> they do. Don't worry. <laughs> right now, so this was just not, not, not Deathwing, but you know, still dragon. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, yeah, I'll be at the meeting too. So uh, also next time, you might not want to just leave a Paladin's Warhammer just in a room. Oh, just it's as fine. A... No one's going to steal that. Really? You <laughs> left a Warhammer here? You could have. Did you no, not? I... Did you not hear the giant clanging as they cave it? It was very obvious. Although you didn't really know what they were carrying, so never mind. That never mind. That makes total sense. It's fine. I totally made sense. I made sure that no one's going to steal it. But go on. You can go try. I'm okay. there. Go and steal it. And she reaches down and pulls out a um, a chest and opens it up. And says, "You could have stored it here." It's fine. I don't need that. Okay. So, you're going to this meeting. How good... You, and you fought... Well, you, I mean, I was going to ask you how good of a fighter that is, but you did say that you just fought dragons, so now, <laughs> obviously, we know how good of a fighter you are. How interested are Unless you... Unless it was a baby dragon. That is true. That could be... The, that, But I feel like that would still be challenging. At least it would be our level of challenging. Anyway, if, are you at all interested in joining people? Because I'm going to be really straight with you here. We don't really know what to do with the hammer, and we could use somebody who does know how to do with the hammer. So if you're a great candidate, get, and you, you know, want to interview for the job position that just paired me up in a few minutes ago. I just grab her on the shoulders, and I just <laughs> escort her away. I'm like, what are you doing? We're just going to put the word in the bag of holding. It's fine. We don't need anyone to right. hold it. So it was good meeting you. I gotta go. I got some stuff to do. I'll see you at the meeting, alright? 
Okay, bye. Yeah. He seems really nice. I don't understand what your problem is. Um, uh, did we meet the same person? <laughs> uh, Kitesh, as you Unless get up to you leave, were hallucinating, <laughs> the yes. cat is now at your feet. So the cat is like the same size as me. So more like um, at my waist. It's more of uh, like half your size. It's more half your size. I am riding it as a as a mount. It is my mini it. display as a piece. <laughs> you grab a hold of the cat to try to. I'm not. I'm not okay. actually. I'm not doing that. That was <laughs> okay. It's staring at you. It, it seems to have been around gnomes before, so it knows what you are. You ready? Yeah, I'll probably be back. Meow. Winks. Watch, walks out. Uh, as you walk out, he taps you, uh, pats you on the uh, the back, since that's the biggest area. And as you leave, uh, the dwarves are still having a nice little round celebrating those who brought uh, the Ashbringer back. The bearers of the Ashbringer. It's kind of morphed into uh, Ashbarners and a few other un, un uh, utterable words, uh, variants of Ashbringer, uh, depending on how slurry you want to get with the speech. Excellent. I have achieved awesomeness. <laughs> <laughs> I like if I being put on this, my Arnurian is like get a little rude, but whatever. <laughs> and and uh, I look back at Audric and take whatever drinks are being bought for us and I start drinking. Audric, it's clear that he's interested in the hammer, obviously. That's why he brought this whole thing up. Why not, just, why not just bring him in close? Then we can figure out what his deal is immediately instead of trying to be, pretend like we're like all suspicious in the beginning because then he'll throw him on guard and he'll be like, oh, you know, Clearly, they're suspicious and smart, but he thinks I'm an idiot. So if we just roll with that, that he's gonna do it then. Well, if he wasn't so condescending. See, but I, but you didn't hear what I said. Condescending people, easy to trick because you can convince them you're a moron. It's super easy. I do it all mm. the time. Um, that does sound like it could be fun. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm See. See. And then. If I was this close to getting him to walk into that room with that hammer smelling as awful as it was, I mean, could you imagine? Boy, it's the best prank ever. <laughs> <laughs> as far as our known pranks go, that one would have actually worked. Uh, are you speaking quietly about that? Yeah. We're at a. I've, I've pulled, we're, he's pulled me away, so we're at a table by okay. ourselves now. Make a. Uh, Wait, I thought you said we got drinks and went to our room. But you said we went to a table. No. I said, when I said I'm drinking whatever drinks are being bought for us. Make a stealth oh, check for that. what you've been saying. The displays are beast to yourself. <laughs> Fourteen. Fourteen. Ooh. Okay. Uh, as you guys continue on in your conversation, you hear uh, light footsteps uh, behind you, Oriana. I like your idea. And the innkeeper is there with a pair of... Uh, uh, with an another pair of uh, glasses uh, for each of you. Uh, wine glasses, some of the best that they serve. I like your idea about practical jokes. Why do you think I got the Displacer Beast? Wine, but also a little rude. I'm sorry, I couldn't help it, but uh, if you need help with your prank, let me know. You know, it, my brother and I are just much better at pranks on our own. She looks at you like, what? Exactly, now go back to the bar. We'll call you if we need anything else. Have a good day. <sighs> uh. Ooh. She walks off. See, like that, it throws people off guard every time. I see. Yeah, but I'm for now. I'm friends with the person who runs the place where you live, and now you're not friends with the person. So, I'm windy. 
<laughs> There's that. Uh, she was totally rude and eavesdropping on our conversation, so I'd say she got burned and deserved it. <laughs> well, you were talking about pranks. She seems to have an eye for pranks. Still rude. Still rude. Anyway. I lean in closer now that I know there are ears nearby. <laughs> what are we, what, is that meeting supposed to be and when are we supposed to be attending? Oh, also, are we supposed to be giving the whole spiel about the boat thing? Because then I feel like Mr. Paladin is going to find out about that we died. That's why I didn't think that you should make something up. <laughs> well, I had to give the bartender something. It's just, look, you... The thing is, is when you do the aloof thing, it invites people to come and, you know, look in. And I was trying to give a, like, uh, pff, it's actually kind of boring story so that they'd be like, oh, these people are kind of stupid. I feel like I succeeded on my end. You continued to do the aloof thing, so... Well, I didn't want the innkeeper to put my name on the wall when people are actively hunting down my family. I didn't put your last name, so you're fine. It just, it, it's, uh, you look up there just to kind of double check, and it says just Audric. <laughs> See, that was going to guess that you are just Audric. Legend of just Audric. Oh no, no, I got it. Audric the Just? There's a typo. It's Audric the Just. <laughs> Alright. Any other discussions or whatnot? Also, while they were talking, Katesh, what were you doing? Just heading on back to your, uh, back to the inn? Uh, no, I'll, I'll go hang out at the Raven's Gaze, actually. Okay. Well, we should probably, uh, prep for this meeting. Get the things done. I think I'll just explain to the, I'll just, if, if the gnome comes back, Katesh... If he comes back and inqu inquizzes us, inquizzes us? Whatever. Asks us about the Warhammer and the story behind it again. I'll just tell him it was top secret so I can we, we have to give him a big story. He'll understand he's a paladin. As, but, and besides, if he is part of this meeting, then obviously he's trusted enough to know the story. Oops. Is he a paladin? Well, Is he a like paladin? One. Who are you asking, me or Oriana? Oriana, okay. Well, he looks like one. I've been around paladins enough to guess if they're god. He had all the markings. I don't remember. I'm not exactly sure which one, but he definitely was one. Did I? Does he look like a paladin? Do I know what paladins look like? Uh, you would have a fair bit of knowledge. You've seen a number of them. Uh, he did look like a paladin. I thought he was like a knight or something. <laughs> That's a paladin. Uh, well, I mean, he, I mean, he was a little shorter than most, but I, I don't discriminate against no paladins. Obviously, if they can a paladin. They can. It's not what you were asking, but anyway, I think it's clear if he's in the meeting, then he's going to be. Also, if he was, see if he's curious about the Ashbringer and the Hammer. I mean, it checks out if he's a paladin. But also, seems well, like if he's a paladin that's no sworn to fight the undead, then he cut out right after sworn to fight the undead. Then he can I'm join sorry, us. Those doors are really loud. What did you say? <laughs> that if he's a paladin that's sworn to fight the undead, then join us. We're getting into. We could use another plan, or not the biggest plan of that plan. We both have things we'd rather not 
appreciate strangers. But I don't know what else to do with the hammer. To you, it's part of our destiny. We can either keep it in a bag all day, or we could hire, or... I don't want to use hire because I don't want to pay him. We could get him to volunteer <laughs> to come with us and use it until we figure out what they're actually doing with it. Well, I guess it will depend on what the meeting decides and what Gen asks of me. That is true. And as always, I will back whatever you decide. Sure. We're still on your home turf. But, um, Clearly, that there are interested parties, so I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go um, take that smell hammer and shove it in the bag, so that we don't have to deal with that anymore. Other interested parties doing more than just asking us about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So then I finish the wine and I get up and I use precipitation, make it smell like. Lovely lavender flowers get, get get rid of the death odor, and I put it in the bag I'm holding. Okay, uh, it takes the uh, the spell, the prestidigitation spell, uh, a few minutes to kick in and work and overpower the scent that you've already put on it. So after about a minute or two, it's a little rank, but it starts clearing out after a while. Uh, Miss Constance would not like her room smelling like that. <laughs> For shame. Ooh, not at all. Uh, Audric, do you do anything? Uh, well, I was planning on some point during today trying to find Gen and ask him what exactly we were supposed to do and like when the meeting was and what he wanted us to do. But I don't want to like disturb him. I also don't know where exactly his room is, so... I guess yeah. I'll just hang out in the tavern until I see him or something. Okay. Uh, you guys hang out there at the tavern and all this, and uh, Kitesh, you're over at uh, Raven's Gaze, just perusing their library as well. Um, and that is about where we're going to end it tonight, kind of on a flat note, but that's okay. Nice, calm note that could be worse. I have other things to do. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, thank you guys for joining us uh, in for another game of uh, Things of the Moon. I hope you guys uh, enjoy this. A little bit more of a roleplay heavy one, but uh, next time could be different. Oh, I also keep an eye out for Malfurion. Oh, yes. Okay. I keep an eye out for Tyrande. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the rest of the day will seem to pass uneventful and whatnot, and we will get to the rest of it next time. Thank you guys for joining us. I hope you guys have a good night, and uh, God bless. <laughs>